Hey there, it's Aaron, and it is uh, two minutes before ten in the morning on uh, July twelfth, two thousand fifteen, and uh, I thought I'd go through uh, some more vinyl. Yesterday uh, there was an estate sale uh, not too far from where I live, and um, I looked at uh, there was an app for yard, the yard seller app. With this, um, I was able to find that there was an estate sale, and uh, I mean you could type in keywords like I look up keywords like records, record, vinyl, albums. So uh, yeah, there was this estate sale, and um, it said that they had a whole bunch of stuff there. It was huge, huge estate sale. Someone about just about everything. Home decor, children's toys, lots and lots of sports memorabilia, probably stuff from Eagles. And it also said that they had uh, vinyl records, ranging from classical, jazz, hard rock, metal, not hard rock, just classic rock, rock, metal, and whatever else. So, uh, my mom uh, took me over there. We went over there because she thought she might see some stuff she wanted there too. And holy crap, did they have? Was there a bunch of vinyl that I wanted to get for stock for my eBay page, and then for myself? And I already knew going in. So my mom found out that uh, the records were all three dollars each. The people who were running the estate sale uh, were a business. I'm sure that some of you may be familiar with the whole concept of it. Uh, my mom had to explain it to me a little bit because I was a little bit of this. Didn't know too much about it. Uh, it was a business who were in charge of the estate sale, not the family. They left it, they left that to somebody else. So that meant I could not get any deals like saying, hey, I have 12, you know, I have 12 records. Could I get them all for 20? No, they're all for $3. 25? No, they're all for three dollars. Maybe if you come back tomorrow, get it. I'm just gonna get these ten records. So in the end, I got four for stock and uh, six for myself. There. Um, I also read in there the, the Craigslist uh, advertisement that uh, there was uh, a bunch of Playboy, or like over three hundred Playboy magazines from the '80s, '90s, and 2000s. <laughs> so. I don't know if this guy was lonely, but then again, my mom spotted some Barbie toys there that she had as a kid. And I'm just thinking, well, that's creepy. <laughs> you know, the whole story with that is, uh, the four that I got for stock uh, were Elton John's Greatest Hits on Superdisc. I guess like an audio audiophile sort of a like high-quality sort of a thing. Uh... The Cars debut album. Don't get on the other one. Let's up on four. And uh, Genesis Abacab. So those all four went on uh, eBay. Now I will get into my collection, but first I'm going to have to show the one record that I forgot in the last video that should have been there, and that is Lou Reed. So this is his uh, first album. Uh, this is at the record museum. I got this one, um, five bucks. Yeah. All right, now I'm gonna go into the ones I got from the estate sale. Um, alphabetically, I'm gonna have to start at a P. So, it shows you how weird it was. All right, this one's gonna surprise some of you, but if you saw the last video, maybe not as much. Prince, 1999. This one I have yet to listen to. Um. But from what I hear, this is one of his uh, best albums. Uh, I know Little Red Corvette's on here, 1999 is on here, obviously. So, um, yeah, it's three dollars. Why not? Now, the thing about um, all these records, I mean, it was really dirty. After I came back, I had to wash my hands. My mom even washed her hands just from carrying some of the records for me. Um, the thing that's weird is that. He, Whoever this guy was, he put them all in uh, new sleeves. 
So he must have had, and they were all very clean. So I'm guessing the guy had a, he had to have a, some sort of a, one of the big dish, or not dishwashers, one of the disc washers, like a, like a thousand or three thousand dollar one, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's a tube record set. I'm not going to bother showing the other one, but um, yeah, it's nice to have. Rainbow Rising. Oh, my eyes almost fell out of my sockets when I saw this one. Because um, I just never see uh, any rainbow um, on vinyl. Okay, maybe I did at the record museum, but not this one. I mean, it's just the weirdest thing. You're going through, what, Sinatra, Jazz... Uh, who else was there? Like, Newton or a lot of Elvis there too. Um, it's just, and then out of nowhere, boom, Rainbow. Uh, this is their second album, um, and my favorite, and I think many would agree that this is their best album. Uh, great lineup on here with Ron James Dio, uh, Richard Blackmore, Jimmy Bain, Cozy Powell, and Tony Carey. Um, my only thing about this album, I, I have it myself on CD. Uh, the only thing that bu bugs me about it, I mean, I love it, but 30 minutes. Come on. They couldn't make it any longer? But yeah, this is a great album, and uh, I was listening to this yesterday. Great album. Now, the weird thing about some of these albums here are, are that... Um, I'm not going to show it with this one because it's just going to be too much of a hat. Okay, maybe I'll shut up. All right, hold on here. A lot of these are, ger for some reason, they're all German uh, pressings of the album. See that? G-E-M-A. Uh, another Rainbow. Long Live Rock and Roll. Uh, their last at Ron James Dio. Uh, the only Rainbow I have is their first three on CD uh, with Ronnie. So, uh, I don't know whether to get their other albums. I don't have the, the live one uh, on stage. Well, uh, yeah, this this one was really clean. Uh, more clean than Rising. Um, great sound and album on vinyl. So, that. Rush, Moving Pictures. Uh, there were two Rush records there. Uh, moving Pictures and Signals. I had to put Signals away because I'm trying to save money and, uh, you know, with all the other records I had, I just thought, well, I like this album, but not enough to get on vinyl. But, you know, this is my favorite Rush album, so why not? Um, this sounds pretty good. Uh, there's a, it skipped a few times on the uh, Audio Technician turntable here, but uh, yeah, this one could be cleaned. There's some wear and tear. Look at that. I don't know if you can see it. But, um, no. Nice to have in vinyl. Van Halen, Women and Children First. Uh, good album, good album. Uh, and all these albums I'm showing, with the exception of Prince, uh, I already have on CD. So. And then uh, last, but not least here, I notice that it has, this is, that's on here. Yeah, I won't bother with it. Uh, yes, Fragile. Uh, I could have put this one back because I do actually see a lot of yes at uh, my local record store, so I thought, well, maybe I can put this one away, but, you know, Chris Squire died about two weeks ago now, so I had to get it. Uh, the record is slightly warped, but it's still playable. It's not where it's in the actual record that it skips. It's just a little uneven. But uh, this one I, I have not played yet. I've played all the others except Prince in this. So, um, this is a uh, 1977 reissue from what I've, what I've seen. Um, so yeah, that's it. And uh, can't think of anything else. I don't want to forget anything else like I've done in the last couple of videos. So um, I don't think I, I don't think I, I think that's everything. All right. I'll see you next time.